Welcome to Kellogg College. This is Oxford's largest postgraduate college, but it's also its friendliest and its most diverse. The college was founded in 1990 on St. David's Day. It was originally called Ruley House from the name of the building where the Department for Continuing Education is based. Um, but in 1994, um, thanks to a generous benefaction, we renamed it Kellogg College. It was originally set up to provide a collegiate base for mature part-time postgraduate students, um, but it was soon realized that it was attractive to full-time students and younger students as well, and we now have a very generous mix. Originally, the college was based in Ruley House. It had one room in Ruley House, um, which is where the Department for Continuing Education is. Um, but the W.K. Kellogg Foundation gave us this benefaction uh, to enable us to find an independent site. And we looked at various locations in Oxford, including Oxford Prison, but the fellows were not too keen on that. And eventually, in 2006, um, we acquired this four-acre site on Norham Manor in North Oxford. Um, now, Norham Manor was laid out by St John's College in the 19th century, round about 1860, uh, as a result of a master plan by William Wilkinson, um, who was the architect of the Randolph Hotel. The vision was of a garden suburb, of villas set in generous garden grounds, and we've acquired a number of them. All of this was about to be obliterated in the 1960s when the Pitt Rivers Museum was going to be moved from its location in the science area and rebuilt here with an enormous great geodesic dome uh, designed by the Italian engineer Pierre Luigi Nervi. That got planning permission, and the whole of this site would have been demolished. But they failed to raise the funds for it, and taste began to change. People began to appreciate the Victorian architecture, and a number of these villas were listed as buildings of special architecture and historic interest, um, and eventually a conservation area was designated. So when the Pitt Rivers failed, um, the buildings left on the site were protected, they weren't demolished, um, and this is what the college acquired in 2006. The three villas that the college acquired on the Banbury Road were the showpieces of the St John's College development of Nora Manor. They were on the very western edge, so they were the, in full public view. They were set back from the road with generous gardens. The first one to be built was number 62. This was built for a very interesting man, Richard St John Tyrowitt. He had been a don at Christchurch. He had to give up his fellowship when he got married, um, but he then became rector of St Mary Magdalene Church at the end of St Giles. Um, but he was also a very prominent artist and um, played a leading role in the artistic life of Oxford. He was a friend of William Morris, he helped to decorate the Oxford Union building. Um, he was a very close friend of Ruskin. Um, and perhaps at the invitation of Ruskin, he uh, painted murals inside the University Museum. Um, for 10 years, he was Ruskin's secretary. Ruskin constantly dined here um, with other people like uh, Charles Dodgson, uh, better known as Lewis Carroll, of course, who wrote Alice in Wonderland. He took Tyrowitz's portrait. Um, the entrance porch is intriguing. Uh, it's a sculpture with a quotation from the Book of Proverbs um, and was almost certainly designed by John Hungerford Pollen, who designed the entrance to the University Museum.
Tirawit commissioned this house from an architect called E.G. Bruton. Bruton was a neighbour of Tirawit's in Beaumont Street. They were both living in Beaumont Street when Tirawit was vicar of uh, St. Mary Mag. Um, Tirawit baptised three of Bruton's children, so they were very close friends. And Bruton also designed number 64, um, which is probably the dullest of all the villas. Um, this was built for a corn merchant. Um, number 60, the third of the villas uh, to the south, that was designed by William Wilkinson himself. Uh, he designed it for a chemist called Cousins, whose chemist shop was next to the Randolph, which of course Wilkinson had already designed. And I'm sure that's the connection. Wilkinson was tremendously proud of uh, this building and he included it in a book that was published of his designs. There's a common myth that the North Oxford Nora Manor development by St John's was intended to house those Oxford dons who after 1870 were allowed to be married. And so these were family homes for these newly married dons. It's a total myth. Most of the houses here on the Banbury Road were built before dons were allowed to marry. They were mainly built for prosperous tradespeople like corn merchants and uh, chemists. Um, and of course, Tyrowit had been a don at Christchurch, um, but he was the vicar of St Mary Magdalene when he commissioned the house here. The residential accommodation for our full-time students is in Bradmore Road, where we've got six houses. They're not as grand as the villas on Banbury Road. Um, they were all built in the 1870s. Most of them are semi-detached. There's a single detached house that was occupied by the sole Don, uh, a fellow of University College. The other houses were occupied by tradesmen and uh, retired clergymen. They were a development all carried out um, by someone called John Galpin. Now, Galpin ran the Oxford Building Company, which was the biggest developer in the city at that time. Um, he lived here at 12 Bradmore Road um, in a house that's just on the corner with Norham Road. His company was partly funded by small investors and it went spectacularly bankrupt, which led to a riot in Gloucester Green when uh, Galpin was burnt in effigy. The college has further accommodation round the corner in Norham Road uh, at number 38, and so the site is very neatly defined with Bradmore Road to the east, Banbury Road to the west, and Norham Road to the north. When the Pitt Rivers scheme was abandoned, um, the university decided to build a much more modest museum here at number 60 Banbury Road. And it was to be composed of a number of single storey um, units with uh, different displays in them. Only one was built. Um, with this very distinctive roof, it's called locally as the egg box. It was never a success. People never came to visit here um, and it was ultimately closed. The college has converted it into its dining room. Um, when it was first built, it had no windows. So all the windows were inserted um, after 2006 when the college developed the site. Um, the dining room is very distinctive for an Oxford dining room in that it's non-hierarchical. There is no high table uh, distinguished from all the others. Um, it's a dining room that is open to the whole college with furniture designed by local craftsmen. The most recent building on the college site is the Hub. This was built in 2017 to the designs of Field and Clegg Bradley, a well-known Bath firm of architects. 
It's built using passive house principles, uh, which means that it is very ecologically sound. It was the very first passive house building in the university. It also means it's quite cheap to run. It offers a, a cafeteria uh, available for all our students and for the general public as well to bring them into Kellogg. This bronze bust celebrates W.K. Kellogg and of course it was his charitable foundation that enabled the college to acquire the site. It's placed in the entrance lobby to number 62 Banbury Road. This is a portrait of Dr. Geoffrey Thomas. He was the founding president of the college and indeed the inspiration for its very existence. Geoffrey is Welsh, which is why the college was founded on St. David's Day. And if you look at this excellent portrait by Keith Breeden, you can see the Welsh daffodil behind Geoffrey. And then in this top corner here, there's a photograph of the 11 founding fellows. And that photograph hangs on the staircase in number 62. Here in the entrance hall, um, we have two plaques. The lower one was originally at Rooley House and commemorates the renaming of the college. Um, the one above commemorates the college making this site its home and it was unveiled by the Chancellor, Lord Patton. We're, we're now in the dining room and Kellogg is the only college in Oxford or indeed in Cambridge to have a Welsh grace. That of course is due to Dr. Thomas as the founding president. Um, the grace is here on the walls of the dining room in Welsh with an English translation below. The college crest was the result of a long discussion with the College of Heralds, um, advised by Blue Mantle Persuivant. It symbolizes, like all coats of arms, um, the essence of the college. There is a pointed arch at the top, a stylized version of a Gothic arch from Rooley Abbey, which gave its name to Rooley House. Um, students pass through that arch um, to acquire their knowledge from the Book of Learning. On the other side is an ear of corn to represent our benefactors, and the two sides are amalgamated by the jagged line with 11 points representing the founding fellows of the college. When St John's originally laid out Loram Manor, they specified that the houses fronting onto the Banbury Road should have low brick walls topped by iron railings and with planting behind. This is the last surviving section uh, of that specification in the three villas owned by the college. The college is deeply committed to preserving the very special historic character of its site. That character is derived from the Victorian villas and their gardens. Um, they're all different and to create a unified campus um, is a major challenge. The college has commissioned the eminent landscape designer Andy Sturgeon to come up with a master plan for the gardens that will bring all our buildings together um, and we look forward to seeing the results.